It's Maxine here from Northumberland Zoo again with the next episode of Bring the Zoo to You. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be focusing on some of my favourites, uh, the owls. We have got nine amazing species of owls here at the zoo, and we're going to be getting up close and personal with one of them in particular, and I'll introduce you to the rest. Uh, enjoy! Now, I know we're not supposed to have favourites, but we do, we can't help it. And we're about to go in with one of my favourites here at the zoo. He's very, very special. We've had him since he was nine days old, uh, since he was this big. Latin name is Strix leptogrammica and the Latin name Strix refers to a legendary vampiric owl monster who was believed to suck the blood of infants hence why we have called Drax Drax because Drax is obviously short for Dracula but he's not scary at all um, so yeah I would like to introduce you to him here we go Drax, who is this? So this is Drax and Drax is a brown wood owl or an Asian wood owl. Um, he's fully grown and he's just got his adult feathers through so he looks a lot different to what he did three months ago. He was still all nice and fluffy, weren't you? Yes you were. So Drax is super special. Obviously, having hand-reared any animal from such a young age, um, you do get very, very attached to them. And as much as I don't really want to get too attached to anything, it's very, very difficult when you have funny little creatures like this one. Hi. Hello. 
What are you doing? Oh, ho, ho, ho. hello. Hello. So owls have got really, really good long distance vision for spotting prey. Um, but their up close vision is very, very poor. Um, so that's why when he's kind of looking at my hand, he is having a little nibble, wondering if it's food or not. Because obviously he's used to us feeding him. But obviously, it's not food. But he doesn't know until he actually puts his beak onto it. He's getting very excited. Now, when owls do that funny head bobbing thing, they're just merely trying to figure out how far away something is. So, by moving their head around, they can kind of get an idea of uh, depth perception. So that's all he's trying to do, is he's trying to figure something out. So, unlike us, their eyes are fixed in their heads, which basically means that they can't like do this kind of stuff, and they can't cross their eyes like this. Um, so that means they can't focus on things really close up, but it does mean that they can spot their prey from like a mile away, which is insane. Now, one very, very notable feature about Drax is the fact that he has very dark eyes. They're, they're very, very dark brown. Uh, and with owls, the eye colour tells you quite a lot about them. So having really dark eyes indicates that he is actually a nocturnal owl. So that means he's active most at night time. Whereas your snowy owls and things like that, they've got yellow eyes, which means that they're active during the day. Um, the only other colour of eye that you have left is the kind of ambery, orangey coloured eyes, like pebbles, our um, Bengali glau. And that means that they're active most at dawn and dusk. What are you doing? Oh, he's so excited. Yes, he is. I'll put you down. Yeah, I'll put you down. Yeah. So we know that Drax is a boy because we've had to have him officially DNA tested. So you can't tell by just looking at an owl if it's a boy or a girl. Um, they all look exactly the same. So the only way to properly sex an owl is to DNA test them. So what you have to do is you've got to take a few feathers from the breast and you send them away in the post to the laboratory where they test the DNA to see if it's got male or female genes in it. Um, and then that's the only way you can find out. Or you could just wait until they lay an egg, but it's very unlikely that it would happen anytime soon. Now, by looking at Drax here, you can tell that he uses his eyes mainly for hunting. His eyes are huge compared to the size of his head, and he doesn't really have a very pronounced facial disc. Um, so, with an owl that has a really big dish, like for example a great grey owl, they really, really depend on their sense of hearing to find their prey. Their eyes are really, really small in comparison to the size of their face. So, sound is what they rely on to spot their prey. Whereas these guys, you can see he's got massive big eyes, so he uses his eyes mainly for spotting prey. So we feed them a variety of different things. Uh, we give them quail and mice and day-old chicks, um, just as a bit of a variety. Sometimes they get rabbit as well, um, so we do try and mix it up a bit for them. Drax is trained up in displays, so he can actually fly. Um, so he flies in our public displays inside of our new display building. Owls have this amazing ability to be able to turn their heads about 270 degrees around. So that basically means all they have to do is stand in one place in the tree and just turn their head around and try and spot prey without actually moving. So it makes them really, really stealthy and quiet. Now, they have some special mechanisms in their neck to allow them to do this. Basically, they've got these two like air cushions right in the backs of their neck, which pad out the major veins that travel to and from the brain so that when they turn their head they don't cut off the circulation to their brain um, because that's what would happen if we tried to bend our head around that much we would literally just uh, it just wouldn't work <laughs> Um, so these guys have got these special crazy pillow things in their necks to help pad them as they turn their heads right the way around. So I want to show you some pretty cool stuff here. Um, I've got a couple of feathers here from different uh, birds that we have here at the zoo. Um, I've got one from an owl and one from one of our hawks. Um, and first of all, what I want you to kind of notice or kind of listen for is the sound difference. So the owls have got a lovely like layer of fuzz on top of their feather. Um, and that means that when they're flying through the air, it's super smooth and super quiet. Um, whereas the hawk doesn't have that. It's completely smooth, completely sleek. Um, so when you listen to them, so this is the owl feather. Lovely and quiet. And this is the hawk feather. 
So big, big difference. Now, um, physically, that means that the hawk is waterproof. So they can go out in all weathers and they can hunt year round, it doesn't matter. Owls, however, because they have this extra bit of fuzz on them, um, they're not waterproof. Uh, so basically, they are very, very restricted. They're fair weather flyers. Um, so when the weather is a bit rough, uh, they have to just sit in the tree and be miserable and not get any food. So, but in all seriousness, in times where there's sustained periods of bad weather, uh, British species like tawny owls and barn owls really do suffer with the weather because they can't fly. Um, they just could end up like drowned rats and they end up really, really miserable. So we are very lucky here at the zoo because we obviously have the indoor wild theater. So regardless of the weather, year round, our owls can fly, which is really nice. The other really cool thing that I wanted to show you was one of the owl pellets. Owl pellets are basically a byproduct of what they're eating. Owls are unable to digest all parts of the animal that they're eating. They can't digest the bone, they can't digest the uh, fur, and they can't digest the feathers. So what do they do with it? They don't have a knife and fork, they can't pick it off like what we can. They have to just eat it. Um, so what happens is, is their stomach has this amazing mechanism that basically it combines all of these things together, all the bones and the feathers and the fur, puts them into a lovely little compact unit, and then once a day, out pops a pellet. So this is a pellet that I collected today uh, from our female snowy owl cloud. Um, it's quite a beast, but she's a beast of a bird. Um, and in it, I can tell that yesterday she had uh, chicks um, for lunch. So yay. In here we've got chick legs. Um, there's obviously a lot of the yellow fluff from the chick there as well. Um, so you can tell a lot about what an owl's been eating by looking at their pellet. And scientists use this for identifying what owls in the wild eat, in fact. When you're going outside for a walk next time, uh, have a little look on the floor, see if you can see anything like this. Obviously use a stick, uh, prise it apart and see what kind of bones and little creatures you can see in it and see what your owls have been eating. Um, Cause it is really, really interesting. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Drax and seeing some of our other owls here at the zoo. We can't wait to open our doors again so that we can start doing displays properly and you guys can get to see them really up close and personal. Um, as always, if you guys could subscribe to our channel, that would be much appreciated because every subscription counts and we're hoping to be able to raise money through the zoo through YouTube. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions or if there's any animals that you would like to see in particular, then please do let me know. Um, in the meantime, stay safe and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.